The senator from South Carolina. Thank you. Um, I just pick up where my colleague left off. So there are four parts to the supplemental um, uh, appropriations uh, sent over by President Biden. One deals with Ukraine and count me in for Ukraine. Robust aid to Ukraine really helps us here at home. Uh, helping Israel, no brainer, count me in. Uh, beefing up Taiwan makes perfect sense. There was money in the supplemental for border security, but it really didn't address the problem we have. And here's what I want the body to understand. Uh, here's what happened yesterday. The FBI director testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee about the level of threats we face as a nation. And he said, while there, ha there may have been times over the years where individual threats have been higher here or there than where they might be right now, I've never seen a time where all the threats or so many of the threats are all elevated at exactly the same time. This was yesterday. What did he say? Post October the 7th, the horrible attack on our friends in Israel, you've seen a veritable rogues gallery of terrorist organizations calling for attacks against us. He said that yesterday. The threat level has gone to a whole other level since October the 7th. This is what the FBI director said yesterday. Are any of us listening? I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. Ask him about blinking lights regarding 9-11. Apparently they were blinking and we missed them. Do you see any blinking lights? And he said, I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. He said that yesterday. Now why are Republicans, apparently more than anybody else, insisting that the supplemental package not only help Ukraine, not only help Israel and Taiwan, but actually help us? You got to change the policy because what we got is not working. Yesterday, yesterday, 12,000 encounters at the border, the highest ever yesterday. Two days before, 10,000 were marching in the wrong direction. As these numbers go to new levels and historic levels, the FBI director yesterday told us He's never seen more threats against our homeland than he does today. And since October 7th, every terrorist group in America, in the world, is calling for an attack on America. Ask him about the border. He's very concerned about the status of the border. So we're on track, if this continues, to have 3.6 million illegal encounters that we know of at the border. That is like beyond unsustainable. All time highs every day. From 2023 to 2020, the encounters at the border are up 368%. Why? Because the policies of the Biden administration make people believe that they get to our border, they stay in America, and they never leave. And if you don't change that, you're never going to fix the problem. Six million people have already come to our border in the first three years of the Biden administration. We're on track to do 3.6 million in uh, FY24. The day that people think Trump is going to be the nominee and could win the White House, you're going to see a run on the border like you've never seen because people want to get the last good deal under the Biden administration. Because when Trump wins, if he does, uh, all this is going to change. There are two problems that have to be fixed. You make a solemn claim in America at the border you pass the initial credible fear standard, which needs to be elevated. You're released into the country to go to your hearing regarding your asylum claim three to five years later. That makes people believe they're released and they never will show up. Once you're here, you're never going to leave. We got to change that. While you're waiting for your hearing that may be three to five years away, you need to wait outside the country. That will stop a lot of the illegal immigrant flow because when people realize you can't wait in America, you're home free once you make your asylum claim, they'll be less likely to pay $10,000 or more to wait in Mexico or some other country for four or five years. The second thing is that this administration is abusing the law. The secretary of DHS has the ability on a case-by-case -case basis to allow urgent humanitarian uh, parole for for urgent humanitarian reasons 
or significant public benefit. This is meant to be an individual case-by-case -case analysis. They're using this concept, the Biden administration, to have blanket humanitarian parole for 240,000 people from four different countries. That's an abuse of the law. This law is being used to just flow people through, and that needs to change. So if you put a cap on how many people could come into the country through humanitarian parole, getting back to the original intent of the law, and you told people if you apply for asylum, you've got to wait outside the country before your hearing is held, then you'll have a dramatic reduction in legal immigration. I know that works. That doesn't fix a broken immigration system, but it does give us control over an out-of-control border at a time of elevated threats. To my Democratic colleagues, I've been negotiating with you for 20 years on how to fix a immigration system that's broken. You need more legal immigration, you need border security, you gotta have a pathway to citizenship for those who are deserving. I get all that. This is not about a immigration reform negotiation. This is about securing the border at a time of heightened threat to our country. 172 people on the terrorist watch list we know of have been caught. Only God knows how many of them we missed. This run on the border is locking the border patrol down, just processing people. Fentanyl poisoning of Americans is an all-time high. 100,000 people last year died because fentanyl is coming through a broken border. So to my Democratic colleagues, this is not about immigration. It's about national security. There are ways to fix this problem if you choose to do it. I want to help Ukraine. I want to help Taiwan. I want to help Israel. But we've got to help ourselves. There will never be a bill I'll vote for to help other countries who are very deserving until we control our own border that's completely broken. You need to understand that, and the public is with us. Most Americans would like to have their border more control, not less, and what you're doing is not working. With that, I yield.